I was exploring alone for Ice Age fossils when I uncovered more than I could handle. I am standing over the finest today. I cannot believe what's underneath me. Buried below me were the associated remains to an extinct American mastodon. That is amazing. I'm going to recover it. Our goal for this video is to show how we discovered, excavated, and restored this incredible fossil. But first, you guys have to see how I ended up getting here. This is amazing. I'm really grateful to be out here today. It's one of my favorite times of the year. We'll probably see a lot of flowers in bloom, and I've already started counting up the gators, but this is the happy place. Rivers run dry, dust breath in the air. Two dark days, do you have a... This spot over here looks deep and fun, so let's check it out. My absolute favorite part about fossil hunting is exploring. This was a scouting trip. So any bend in the river that might look like it has erosion or exposed gravel, I was gonna jump in. And if there were fossils there, we were gonna absolutely find them. Dugon, lots of dugon bones. In shallow Miocene sites like this, dugons are so common. More dugon. And the reason for that is these bones are simply already so thick and solid, there's a strong preservation bias for them. Oh, it's pretty deep. Whew. Go finish checking it out. Dugon graveyard though, look at all these bones. Each one of these pieces is part of a dugon rib. And now, you may have heard people say that they're, they're not fat, they're thick boned, they're big boned. Well, dugons actually were. So their ribs are solid, they're extremely thick, they have no vesicles, and that's because these are used as ballast to keep the dugon on the bottom of the river or ocean because they are so fat and blubberous that if they didn't have these thick bones, they wouldn't be able to stay on the bottom of the rivers. We want to find some Ice Age material, so we're going to keep heading down river and see what we can get on. We've got what looks like another deep hole, so hopefully somewhere in here, there's gonna be something cool for us to find. Okay, now that is super cool. Check out this polished cypress driftwood. If I could, I would love to take some of that back home with me. You could probably make, oop, something big over there just jumped. Anyway, you could probably make some really cool home decor projects with that. But that's beautiful. You never know what you're gonna see out here. It's such a beautiful river, even if there are big things over there. But I'm gonna get in water right there. As soon as I got underwater in this spot, I found this dead turtle. Now, it makes you kind of wonder what's going on, what else is in the river. Um, freaks you out a little bit, but I don't know what else to do. Seeing something like that when you're underwater is never a good sign. You don't know how that animal died and it just, it gets your senses all going crazy, but I'll stay focused. If there's a gator, it shouldn't be an issue, but still, it's so scary. At this point in my life, I'm pretty used to wild animals in these rivers, and luckily, we were able to get back underwater and find our first Ice Age bone from this spot. That's a good sign. Ice Age bone, well preserved too. Trying to clear all these logs out before getting underneath this, but even though this looks super sketchy, there could be some good stuff because we're on hard pan below us. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And that hard pan can sometimes trap large fossils. So if we get lucky, under all of that grossness, there might be something really good. The visibility in this spot was really bad. You can tell that there's a bunch of foliage, which makes it hard to navigate. But in that little crack right there, I found or could see something really incredible. Ooh, I am standing over the finest today. I cannot believe what's underneath me. Whoa! 
look at that thing! It's perfect! This is an unerupted single fossil tooth. It's huge! Oh my gosh! I'm freaking out. I am totally freaking out. Look at that thing! That is perfect! That's awesome! I still have a lot of this hole to check, so there might be something even better just behind me or right to the left of me. So I've got to figure it out and I've got to get in there and check. So I'm not joking right now when I just thought I picked up a ball of clay and I look in my hand and it's not a ball of clay. It is another mastodon tooth and it might be better than the first one. So I, it's, I'm freaking out and I'll just show you. I just, I got to show you. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. I did not mean to pick this up. That is another perfect tooth. <laughs> and it's probably from the same animal. I, I think I have other teeth associated with this as well, but this is nuts. I gotta get the nice camera and show you guys this. That's a better look at it. It's perfect too. I put the other one right over here. They're definitely from the same animal. And I definitely have a tooth associated to this animal already. So Joe wasn't able to make it out today and I just got a text from him and he said if I find one more of these, we're over. It's it between us as fossil hunting buddies. But I'm still freaking out about how I found this. But the limestone clay trap over here, I'll give it one more quick glance. And then this limestone shelf dips into a deep hole. So I'll check out that deep hole and if there's any more fossils in here, I will make sure to find them and then show them to you. If you are, oop, that's deep. Hopefully I'll get through that. I got through it. <laughs> if you are enjoying today's adventure, please subscribe to the channel. I've got the Nemo dive system with me right now, and that should help us getting into this deep hole. At this point, I'm just moving my hands back and forth until I find bone like this. There's no visibility here when it gets murky, and there's not enough flow to clear it out, so that's the best way for me to find new bone in this spot. More bone. This is just more bone. So right now it's kind of hard to see what's going on below me. As you can see, there's a lot of gunk, the visibility is poor, and there are palm trees below me are in my way. So I'm grabbing that gravel and things that can feel like bone and just pulling them up and getting clay and balls out of the way. And this is a good area, I'm finding more bones, so we should be able to find something good. So this huge chunk of sand that's fallen down at the bottom of it, I think I found a large chunk of this mastodon skull. So there might be more teeth associated with it. The bone is very poorly mineralized. So I'll fan it out, see what's there. I'm glad I took one more last glance in this clay layer and I can see where it's coming out of this large block. So I'm gonna get underwater. I'll show it to you really quick before fanning it up. What I'm pointing out right now is the developing M3 for a mastodon. So that's the final adult tooth that they'd get. And I can tell that there's more bone going into the bank buried there. And right in front of it, that, that looks like the base of a tusk. That's when I'm really excited at the potential for what this find could be. That's a tusk and a developing tooth. There is more of the animal here. I'm not sure how much tusk is there, but we're going to be really careful with what we do next. I might need to call Joe. He might need to come here tomorrow or something and try to uncover it, but safely. And that's crazy. Let's fan this up real quick. So this process is generally pretty time consuming. So I'm going to set up my camera right here and you guys can enjoy this quick little time lapse of me doing all the hard work to uncover this pretty cool fossil. It was at this point I confirmed I definitely had a mastodon tusk. Now how much of the rest of this animal skull was there, I'm not really sure at this point and I really did not want to risk hurting or damaging what was there before I could come back. That's a mastodon tusk for sure and there's a large part of the skull there. I'm probably going to have to come back here tomorrow or in two days with some material that allow me to safely recover this. I doubt we're going to be able to recover much. Unfortunately, I'm taking a look at it and it's full 
of small cracks. Which means it's already starting to fall apart. The tusks here aren't like the ones in Alaska. They don't really get mineralized. They don't turn into rock. Instead, they get leaps of minerals and they start to fall apart. But it's really cool to see that in situ in the bottom of the river. And if we can recover safely some of this, we will. But we'll have to go about this in a in a much different way than we normally do in fossil hunting in Florida. To finish out the day, I decided to dive the very deep hole that's right near this site. This hole is pretty cool because it's full of wildlife. There were catfish, there were placostomous fish, and they make you a little bit nervous because alligators like these sandy bottoms, but it also had some really interesting fossils, like this complete fossilized deer antler. And let's see, I should, there we go. I also found more to our mastodon. I don't know how it ended up getting pushed there and staying together, but that is a mastodon jaw segment. Really cool fossil. Oh, a mastodon jaw segment. Deer antler. Cool hole, very sketchy. So the deep hole by the mastodon pallet did lead to a couple of interesting finds. I think this is actually associated with these two teeth, but it's weird how the river pushed it over there. It's really cool though, because it's got the symphysis in. It would have had tusks, these little front lower jaw tusks right there. But we'll see if this goes with the other stuff I have from this animal. But it's a really cool piece regardless. And then an interesting fossil right here. That's a deer antler. That is well mineralized deer antler. And you don't always find extinct animals. Of course, deer, black bear, raccoons, other extant animals, animals we still have around, would have been here just like the extinct mastodons and mammoths that were around in the Ice Age. Those animals share the same habitats. Now it's time to get the gear packed up. We've got a long trip out of here. And then I am really excited to get back out here with Joe. We're back in the river, I've got Joe with me. We're heading to the Mastodon Pallet and we'll try to recover it today. And Joe's having us go over a log, so hopefully we don't die getting out there, but it's so beautiful out here. And I'm really excited to see how much of this animal's skull is there. After making it further downriver, we suited up and began clearing out the area of logs and debris. After the site was clear, Joe got his first look at the Mastodon remains buried on the water. There's a lot there, isn't This is there? not gonna be easy. That's not gonna be easy. That's gonna crumble so bad if we try and take that up without... What are our options? Take... yank the tusks off. Get the tusks off. Or... We could... we could... here's what we're gonna do. Alright? We're gonna take these logs right here. We're gonna dam the river right there. We're gonna come back on sun... I gotta do stuff Sunday. We're gonna come back on Saturday <laughs> when this has had a chance to drop and we flood all these uh, woods up here. All right, then we're gonna jacket that with some scotch cast so you can overnight. <laughs> all right, scotch cast, pay me. <laughs> That's way too much work, John. I wanna go home. <laughs> I had to work today. I could have been dry. Well, whatever warm. we do, we've gotta make sure we can keep even the smallest pieces because they could probably fit back together. That's gonna be a lot of fitting back together. A lot of puzzling. I think we better just fan around you just see what we're working way. with and okay. see what that other bone is and see if we can't get that out behind the maxilla. Okay. Joe and I immediately went to work removing the compact sand and clay that surrounded the tusk while trying our best not to damage the fossil itself. After a few hours, we had exposed more of the first tusk and had discovered a second articulated tusk nearby. There's more of it. You didn't tell me there was two tusks. Well, I, there was one whole tusk. I don't know how much of the other one's there. Okay, I'm going home. <laughs> you, you didn't tell me nothing about two tusks. I don't know how we're going to get this out without yeah. shattering it. That's going to really suck trying to get that out, and I've got the shakes. I wish it wasn't underwater. We could have jacked it and done everything a lot better if, if it was on the bank, like yeah. this was Peace River or something, and you yeah. found it just washed out of the banks at the low season. That would have been better. Yeah. We decided to finish removing the tusk we had already exposed before working on uncovering the second tusk. That turned out to be much more difficult than anticipated as the ivory was shattered in many areas and we had to use zip ties to keep the rest of the tusk from falling apart. And after some painstakingly stressful work, we had the entire tusk stabilized with zip ties and were ready to remove it from the river. Not 
not exactly how we'd hoped, but it's no. now. Hold on. This thing is not together at all. It's apart? Well, no, 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 it's just falling apart. We're not in good shape. That's still a sick little tusk, dude. I would not be too upset about that back end, honestly. At this point, Joe and I could both feel the tusk breaking in our hands, and as much as we wanted to get this thing out in one piece, it just was not stable enough for us to do so. Oh, whoopsies. It's okay. Pets staying together. For the most part. Joe and I took our time transporting the fossil over to the opposite bank, where for the very first time we could really appreciate how delicate this fossil was, and, in my opinion, how cool it was. Wow, the interior, that's just clay. Yep. Oh, it's clay. It hadn't fossilized at all. Nope. Alright, well, we got something. There's two major pieces of like this better than any of my tusks. <laughs> Our next step was to try to uncover some of the bones associated with the animal's maxilla or upper jaw, but unfortunately, we were in for a nasty surprise. So even though Joe and I were pretty hopeful today, you it was no chance we were going to be able to recover this animal. It is literally I the condition. Say no chance. We'll be able to like, get the teeth and maybe we'll be able to get the teeth and maybe hopefully a lot of the palate. But and maybe wow. some other tusk. But look at that. See how it's this just falling apart. This is just held apart? together by mud. Yeah, it's already deteriorating. Yeah, same thing with this one. This one's just going to fall apart. Look at the bone quality. It's just mulch. It's just mulch. It's just mulching. That's so sad. Normally they're in better condition than this. But, but there's nothing you can do with something like this. Even if you had an underwater basket, it'd fall apart in the basket. You can't move it. This is the bone right here at the back of the skull. So you had a decent amount there. Yeah, but we'll be able to recover some more. It's just sad. Sad yeah. to see it. If we hadn't found it, though, that would have been in a billion pieces next year. Yep. Oh, well. I can't believe that it's just molten. You've got a tusk. You've got a complete tusk. Yep, and we'll try to get that other one. We're gonna get the other one. So the second tusk is going underneath the bank, and Joe over here We're says, already up underneath this freshly fallen stuff, and that tusk is just diving down, like, right there underneath this log. So I'll just watch John's bubbles when he's wrapping up that other tusk with the zip ties, and, like, if the bank collapses on him, I'll get his corpse back to his family. If we have the teeth out on the bank, and that happens... <laughs> Before we get the teeth out, I've still gotta, I've still gotta keep you alive. This you... thing scares me. <laughs> just as long as it doesn't fall on both of us, then we're right. both screwed. Well, let's excavate that tusk and let's get these teeth out. Are we gonna? Ex are, I thought let's we were first, gonna leave first. the tusk and let's oh, yeah, get the teeth. teeth. Yeah. That's gonna be rough. How are we gonna do that? Before working on the second tusk, we decided to uncover and excavate the teeth still remaining in the sand and clay, which ended up proving to be rather difficult. Did it yeah, fall apart? Yeah, it's falling apart. Uh, Can you make some kind of thing for it? Through some kind of muck puddle over there? Yeah. All right, I'll swim in front of you. Despite the poor bone quality, it appeared that most of this mastodon's teeth were still intact and trapped in the original sediments on the bottom of the river. And after recovering our first tooth, we were able to tell that this animal had some incredibly pretty fossilized teeth. That's good. That's, that's nice. That's a good shape. Look at the clay it's Where's in. the other one? It's in front of it. I focus on one tooth at a time to make sure I can get on each individually. The final tooth we managed to recover is by far one of the most delicate and prettiest teeth in my entire collection. Wow, the roots are nice. nice. Oh, wow. Yep. That's the prettiest tooth I've ever seen in my life. Let me see. Oh, nice. It's gorgeous. Oh, look at the wear pattern right there. Where it's like polished. Yep. Oh, that's pretty. That has yellow teeth. Wow. Hey, John. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm gonna do what's called a good friend move. Hey, don't not. No, no, Joe, Joe. Whoopsies! <laughs> we got the teeth out, mostly all there complete, which I'm thankful for. And we're working on the second tusk right now, but it's going. Underneath Way this underneath bank. That yeah, bank. we've got a little bit more work to do, but it is there. And after only a few more minutes of fanning, Joe and I came to an incredible realization. You have the entire other tusk there. I saw it going out. It's all going down. 
Holy sh As we continued to expose the tusk, Joe and I got even more excited about the condition and rarity of this unique fossil. That's that a nice tip. Perfect tip. That's There's a nice tip. That concrete sand. Yeah, that's a nice tip. That's a nice tip. Woo! Joe and I worked around the clock to stabilize the tusk using zip ties as soon as we exposed it. Doing that by feel in the pitch black, that's not fun. But I got I got four of the small ones wrapped around the tip. Do you have those three other of the thicker ones? I got three thicker ones, yeah. It should be pretty pretty stable for us to save that tip, I hope. We took our time adding the remaining zip ties and made sure that the tusk was completely secured before deciding we were ready to remove it. 100% up and free. I think it's got a zip tie about every inch to inch and a half from the tip down. You only want to stick in my head underneath Ooh. all this stuff. Look at what I'm look at what I'm working under. Look at what I'm working half my body under. Beats a cubicle. Well, a cubicle's not going to collapse on me in any second. Come on now. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> the tip's loose. I can get my fingers all the way around it up there. Cool. It feels like it's, stay it's all staying together, so do you want to pull it out or do you want me to? Uh, we're going to need to do it together, probably. After a very long day in the river, Joe and I went down and literally held our breath as we recovered the last part of this ancient animal, its final tusk. We were nervous, to say the least. It's pitch black in there. You don't know exactly what condition the tusk is in, but we did our best and we managed to recover this exceptional fossil in two pieces, which, considering the condition that it was in, was much better than we could have possibly hoped for in this kind of situation. I know it's split there, but this isn't bad so far. This is good. This is really good. It's this an is easy really lake. good. Yeah, there was the only gap that I left. My bad. It's okay. This is not... Look at that tip, dude! I know, let's, let's, let's walk it up, let's walk it up. That's a tusk! Joe's got the other half with it too, so it's in pretty good shape. Oh, it's the flaking up though, still. Check out that glossy... Glossy tip right there. Look at that. Look at that glossy. Look at that. Look at that. Check that out. That's sweet. Look at the patterning in the tip. Yep, put it next to the front and I'll go grab the next camera. We have been here for seven hours and we finally got a large portion of this animal's tusks out. There's the first one there and the second piece over there and there is what we just recovered. So we've got a large portion there and then that's the very tip and they go together and that's actually really nice. That's more than I hoped for. Fish bump. Fish bump. Fish bump. And then right there is the prettiest mastodon tooth I've ever found. The roots are sticking out. We'll have to show you it when we move it into our kiddie pool. And then we're heading out home. And I've got a lot of work to do to make sure that these stay stabilized and in one piece. What you got? What have you been doing? Check it out. Look at this. Oh, so cool. Look. See, that's my fossil. This is my old ancient man. <laughs> Would you think you'd be able to paste that back together? And no, that's right? just float. It doesn't yeah. connect anything. Oh, okay. So that connects to that, and then that and then tip that is tip right tip here. Is that one? Yeah. And, and this then this the... goes to the back there. That's the uh -huh. other tusk. Uh -huh. That's yep. awesome. Work cut out for me, though. Yes. It's been a couple weeks now and the fossils we found are mostly or completely dry. Unfortunately, these are some of the most delicate bones and teeth from a mastodon that I have ever found. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna take these very delicate fossils and bring them over here where I'm slowly gonna start stabilizing them. But before we can even do that, we need to remove all of these small sand grain particles that have cemented themselves to the tooth. If we do not do that delicately, then we're gonna end up cementing all of these tiny pieces of sand to the fossil, which we do not wanna do. Now that the sand has been cleared away, we can start to apply this ultra thin Starbond. Now Starbond is a penetrative super glue basically, and it's gonna stabilize every single one of these cracks. I had to repeat this process over and over again until every single piece of these two teeth had been fully stabilized. I've stabilized every piece to these rearmost molars and we've got almost the entirety of these two teeth here. The tricky part for us is going to be working on these next set of teeth. The mid molars actually have developed roots and they are really delicate because they are made out of ivory. And the M2, the second main molar, the roots are literally 
paper thin. Here's the first segment of tooth I'm gonna work on. Wow, that is delicate. So I'm gonna work on it and let you all see the finished product. The first thing I like to do when I'm working on fossil material like this is remove any of the organic matter and sand and immediately stabilize any delicate cracks. And what that does is it prepares the fossil for whatever kind of stabilizing solution I might want to apply to it. And we might have to actually use a different stabilizing solution because the paleo bond, which is cyanocrylate, is reacting weird with the ivory, it's darkening it. I have some of this Paraloid B72, which is soluble in acetone, and it's actually what people will use to preserve ancient texts. What I decided to do was to lay out three pieces of fossil ivory and test the star bond against the paraloid and see which one performed better. And in my opinion, the paraloid definitely won out. It absorbed better into the fossil and didn't leave this gross sheen. After finishing that test, we needed to get to work on the next tooth. So we're gonna go ahead and move over here and start working on the other M2 molar. It's got a lot of cemented sand and it's really delicate, but we're gonna pick it up transport it over here and start trying to stabilize it. Similar to our previous tooth, our first step on this was to remove all the sand that we possibly could. The problem with that is this is one of the most delicate teeth I have worked on. Literally, you could not put pressure on this thing without worrying about part of the roots flaking off. So at some point, it felt like I was removing each and every sand grain individually. And as you can see, that's an incredibly time intensive process. And eventually it got down to the point where I was not comfortable removing any more sand for risk of actually damaging the fossil. So we went ahead and made a paraloid solution and began applying it to every single part of this animal's tooth. Some of the sand has been glued down to the tooth. And so I'm gonna use regular acetone to go ahead and remove that little bit of sand that got glued to it. So just a dab of acetone in there. And that sand starts coming right off. Really good benefit of using the paraloid is the fact that it's reversible. So we can get the sand off. And there we go, it took a couple days, but this tooth is finally stable enough where I can handle it lightly. It is absolutely one of the prettiest teeth I have ever found. The enamel on it is almost translucent, but I'm gonna have to put this one down and I have a whole lot more work to do. Here is our next stressful project. It's the other half to that tooth right there, but it has a lot of dehydration cracks. My biggest concern with this tooth segment is this giant crack that goes right through the middle of the tooth and comes back out on the other side. So we're gonna have to spend some time and effort trying to stabilize that crack, and that's gonna be the most important focus, even though it does have a lot of sand cemented to it. Oh, there's a bad crack there too. Almost looks better to take it apart and put it back, cause this crack looks like it goes all the way through there. And maybe it'll fit better if I do that. Let's take a look at this. So this piece is actually already broken, so we're gonna remove it, clean it, and then place it back together. There we go. We've got the tooth set where we want it, and we're gonna go ahead and give it a bit of a helping hand. This is an accelerator, and what it'll do is it'll go ahead and solidify the glue when it comes in contact with it. So we don't have to wait for this to dry. Looks like we don't have any glue mess, so we did a good job. All right, it's pretty good. Now we're gonna prepare the last piece that goes right here, but first I've gotta clean this workstation for like the 20th time in the past couple days. We're down to two pieces, and in a couple minutes, we should be down to one. And let's go ahead and wet this half. And then quickly, we're gonna join them together. And just like that, we have a whole tooth again. Honestly, this restoration on this tooth went way better than I expected. It's got a great chewing surface. The enamel is so glossy and beautiful. All we have left are the two big mastodon teeth, the M2s, and then we can move on to the tusks. It's time to see what we're working with. I haven't moved this in a couple days, but the sand seems to have solidified pretty nicely. And let's pick this tooth up. I am super worried about it though, but we'll see how this goes. Okay, so moving didn't destroy it, but I'm not exactly psyched about the condition it's in either. 
It has a ton of cracks. It's very thin and this sand up here is gonna be a pain. But the first thing I need to do is start cleaning it. So as you can tell, the sand is pretty rock solid. So we're gonna try Joe's method. And we're gonna introduce a little bit of water to the sand and see if that loosens it up. And then we're gonna brush it. It's definitely working. Working on these two teeth was an absolutely mind-numbing process. The only way I could remove the sand was by introducing water to the system, which broke down the bonds between them, and then I could use a brush to kind of collect the sand in one area, and then I'd use a tiny little blower to get it off of the fossil. This took hours of repetitive work. Like I am not able to explain how mind-numbing this was in this little short clip, but eventually we got to the point where I could go ahead and stabilize it, and these pieces turned out really beautiful. It has taken a ton of work and a lot of patience, but all the teeth to the Mastodon are complete, they've been stabilized, and now I can move on to the tusks. At this point, the tusks were dry and in five mostly complete segments. To stabilize them, I knew I would need to submerge them in a large amount of Paraloid B72. So I bought a polypropylene container that would not dissolve in acetone, and I measured out 675 grams of Paraloid. The solution I am mixing out right now is an approximately 5% solution that I then let dissolve overnight. Once the paraloid had dissolved, I used these common garden bricks to raise the solution high enough to completely submerge each individual segment. This was my first time completely submerging ivory, and I was really nervous to see the results. When you rehydrate fossil ivory, you can cause it to expand which can create fissures or cracks. I've had pieces completely fall apart because of that effect. Thankfully, the zip ties kept everything stable on our first segment and we could begin working on the rest. Projects like this take a lot of patience and I had to wait for hours as each segment soaked up enough solution. Honestly, I had really been dreading this process because I thought if anything was going to go wrong, it was gonna happen now. That's why I left the zip ties and dirt on all of these different pieces to be able to stabilize them. This decision ultimately added around 20 hours to our restoration efforts, as every single grain of sand that had been glued to the tusk would need to be painstakingly and carefully removed with a soft brush dipped in acetone. This led to many, many late nights, but thankfully once every segment was cleaned, I could finally take all the tusk pieces over to Joe's to finish putting them together. So is this the one that's in three mm. pieces? This one's in three pieces, this one's in two pieces, yeah. Are these two okay. pieces glued together or they're just sitting? They're just sitting, so they which got one of stabilized these two, together. Which one of these two goes to that? So this one over here goes to that, and this one goes to this. Right. You're gonna help me out better. with the boat, right? Yeah, I'll help you out with the bow. Paying me for the final texturing and the painting <laughs> on this sh Unless you can work out a deal with me, you know what I want. I want that seal tooth. It took us a little while to get a plan in place, but eventually we figured it out and actually managed to piece together our first two segments. That, that turned out a lot better than I thought it would. That's why you bring it over to me, huh? I've done this before. <laughs> Now, I was told how to do this shit before. I ain't done this shit before. <laughs> That's good. That'll be, it's lined up well too. So it's not going to be a weird an angle obvious, or bob. Yeah. yeah so. And I can texture that super easy. Oh, f It's got another little thingy print on there. I was thinking about what to get you and Cat for like Christmas and shit. Because mm -hmm. Cat's like, don't get us anything. And I'm like, I'm going to make them like a childish coupon book of like favors and shit. <laughs> like, one, you may say you without retaliation <laughs> one random favor or boon will be requested and granted no matter what it is within within prices and participation may vary the bottom of everyone will say prices and participation oh may vary God. okay i think that's about as good as we're gonna get it for now right, before it sets yeah well it's gonna take four hours to set but i mean i don't want to glob it on there because then it's going to be hard to do the finishing texture all right, of it. all right the first section of tusk has been reattached and we're gonna work on this next one kind of reattached. Yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there. We used ultra thick Starbond to attach our next piece since we had a much cleaner break. All right, not bad. Could be better. That feels good to see them a little bit better than what they were at the river. Well, they were perfect in the river. If you'll remember, they were perfect underwater, underwater where they've been yeah. for 10,000 years. And then you had to go and rip them out of their nice natural homeostasis state and now we're having to do all of this crap to them because of you. They would have gone back to nature. As like pieces this big, 
Yeah. <laughs> it's good phosphorus. Hi, Charlie. Charlie. Looking good, though. At this point, we only had one more segment of tusk to reattach, and it was the very tip. All right, you ready? This is going to evaporate quick. Hey, hit it, hit it again. I want to do it. All right, ready? All right. Yeah, let's go. It was at this point, more so than any other point, that I was literally holding my breath. We had spent so much time and effort into this tusk to finally be so close to being done was a really exciting feeling. I don't like it that it's resting on just that. Well, it's what it's you can't move. No. Wow, this is exciting. It's kind of scary. I think that thing, or that thick glue is going to dry quick. I think that it'll be soaked. Yeah, with how much I soaked that thing, it's not going to go very far. Plus, I can spray more up in there. You want me to? Yeah, go ahead and spray up in there. I think we're basically done. It's been a long time. What? What? Bink! <laughs> oh, we could knock the tip off again? Yeah. Before we do the reveal of what all this looks like now that it's stabilized, I do want to say the best way to help support our channel is to go to our Patreon and sign up to help us. Help you. Help me. Technically, Joe's making his own YouTube channel, actually. So I'm gonna plug- Not right now. <laughs> I'm gonna plug that once he does make it, but it'll help us out a lot. Do and not give him any Patreon money. With that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and show you these fossils. The creme de la creme. Of this here fossil assemblage. Is this right here. This was the left tusk and it is finally 100% restored. If you guys remember when we were stabilizing this, there were some cracks. Joe spent a lot of time hiding those. Since John it. busted up the rest of the skull, I figured I'd better do good work on piecing this back together. So I filled in all the cracks and painted it to match really, really nicely. True. I do this for a living, so if you drop something, I can put it back together. I'm <laughs> practically fixing to drop this one right now. But we actually got every single freaking tooth from this animal, including the still developing M3s. The only teeth that were missing were the developing M3s from the lower jaw, which we have the chin to right here. And then this little piece right here, unfortunately, we did not get the whole tooth. We got about, what'd you say, Joe, two thirds? You got about So that's what it would have looked like whole. And then this is actually the chinny chin chin. Yeah, and if you look right there, I think it's a uh, female. Right? Or are those alveolar sockets? Those for... are lower jaw tusks. Oh, so, so it's like a male it's then. A male. Joe and I have gone back and forth about this animal's sex. We think that it is a young male. It's got these little alveolar sockets right here, and that's for these little tiny lower jaw tusks. Not all males would have them, but some would, and so it's a pretty good indication that our animal's actually a male. Of course, the soft tissue is not preserved for us to confirm that. Now, we also are pretty confident that it's a juvenile because it had this developing M3. And this M2 that's right next to it, this tooth was just erupting. If I pick it up and show it to you, you can see that there is no wear on this animal's tooth. So this animal's tooth was just developing. It hadn't seen much action yet. You can actually see parts of the bone going over the enamel. If you look in the very front of the jaw, you can see these M1s. And this is what it looks like when the animal actually wears down its teeth. Unfortunately, the tragic thing about this would be what, Joe? Well, since elephants, if modern elephants are any clue, are the herd is matriarchal. So if you look at the hot springs mammoth site, it's all young males. And young males being young males, we generally do stupid things like dive into rivers with alligators and that could have happened to this guy, you know? So it could have been killed by a predator. It could have been killed by early man, in fact, that right there could be a weird little predation mark. I was pointing that out to John earlier. Something gnawing on the jowls right there. It likely was just kicked out of the herd, wandered off somewhere, fell down a bank, drowned in the river. Or got predated. Got eaten, eaten by a dire eaten wolf, by something. American lion, saber-toothed cat. We don't really know. All we know is that this animal met Or an some early little dude death. could have been walking around with a rock on a stick and stabbed it in the side and had a good bunch of food, so we don't really know. Even though this animal was incredibly well preserved, it wasn't well mineralized. So this animal probably died, what would you think, 15 to 50,000 years ago? 
not that long ago. Not that long ago. In it's the grand scheme of things, I mean, I definitely didn't see it die. I'm only 26. See, I broke him. I threw you did, him off. You did break me. <laughs> the reason why this animal wasn't well preserved is it was in its original depositional environment. It had never had time to get mineralized and let enough water flow through it to actually change the chemical structure of the bone. It had instead been leached of minerals. If we hadn't found it on this trip, next flood season, all of would these bones and like teeth that. would have been in tiny, itsy bitsy pieces. But luckily, we were able to recover it. And since we know a couple things about fossils, we were able to preserve it. It's really incredible to me to be the first person to discover something like this and then see it go from the incredibly unstable condition it was in to a really incredible museum quality piece. And I am very thankful that all of you stayed for this journey and have made it to this point. If you got some kind of enjoyment from this video, we really would appreciate if you subscribe. Most of you, almost all of you that watch this channel aren't actually subscribed. So if you want to see more content Ooh, like this, that ain't good. I know, right? Please subscribe and if to you the throw channel. Some money and put Joe 15, I get $15 of it. <laughs> Is that true, Joe? Even if they give a dollar, I get $15. <laughs> <laughs> so make make your boy over there rich. And as always, Keep on digging science. So yeah, this is our first ever Patreon end screen. And I guess all I can say is that I'm really thankful for all your support and I hope we get more of you and continue to produce these videos.